what are these for? No, 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 I said M and N. Those are the letters of the alphabet that I'm going to be covering in today's video. M and N. Yeah, but thanks. Hell no, I'm keeping them. Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade, bringing you episode 7 of this year's cycle of Tom's A to Z, in which I take a look at one album by one artist from each letter of the alphabet, approximately, from A to Z over the course of the year. The album's fitting whatever arbitrary criteria comes into my head at the beginning of the year. Uh, the arbitrary criteria in question in this case is the $1 LP section at House of Records, a local store that I love to shop at. And I've discovered a bunch of interesting stuff, uh, a lot of stuff that uh, I've never heard of, but some stuff I have heard of. Uh, but uh, yes, this is episode 7, two letters of the alphabet per episode, so we are at the letters M and M. And interestingly and coincidentally, both of the albums in this month's episode are instrumental albums. So uh, I didn't realize that until I actually played the albums. So uh, I'm not going to have a whole lot to say about these albums. I'm going to have nothing to say in terms of lyrics, since there aren't any. So let's just take a look and see which albums I've got for you today. Uh, representing the letter M in this year's cycle of Tom's A to Z is an artist by the name of Glenn Moore. And this is the album Introducing Glenn Moore. This is his, uh, his first solo album, as would be apparent by the title. But he has made albums uh, with other artists and groups before. Uh, one thing I didn't realize until I uh, looked this guy up on the internet is he is actually from Portland. So he's a, a local or regional artist, and he is in fact a graduate of the University of Oregon, the university local in my area here. And he is a founding member of the jazz and world music group called Oregon, whom I have heard of before, but I've never actually checked out any of their music. Strange, I know. And But they have a very long discography. They've got close to 20 albums, I think, uh, on a cursory glance. I didn't actually count them. But yeah, they've got an extensive discography, and I've but I've just never taken the time to listen to their stuff. It's been a while since I've been in the New Age world music frame of mind, but uh, I guess I've got to check these guys out because this album is actually pretty darn good. Uh, this is basically, a uh, as, as would be uh, indicated by his tenure in the group Oregon, this is kind of a jazz and slightly world music album. Actually, it's a bit more jazz and uh, contemporary classical than it is world music, uh, but there are moments of world music on it. And uh, uh, yes, uh, Glenn Moore is a cellist and violinist and also a pianist. So he switches between uh, cello, violin, and piano on various instruments. And most of the tracks on this album feature David Darling, who also plays cello. He is a cellist. And Zbigniew Seifert, I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly, uh, and he plays violin. So he joins, uh, those two artists actually join Glenn Moore on pretty much all of these, uh, the tracks on this album. Uh, they make a great uh, trio there. And I had actually never heard of those two artists before, but one artist I have heard of before, who actually takes part on actually three tracks on this album, is Jan Hammer. Or Jan Hammer, maybe the way the proper pronunciation of it. And uh, those of you who are 80s, uh, 80s kids like me recognize the name Jan Hammer from being the composer of the music for the TV series Miami Vice in the 80s. Uh, yes, he's done a lot of music over the years. That's not the limit of his credits by any means. He's done a lot of stuff. But uh, yeah, he is a pretty darn good drummer. He, uh, as I said, he plays drums on three of the tracks on this album. Some of the compositions are more avant-garde with uh, unusual time signatures, polyrhythms, odd chord progressions, that kind of stuff. And two of the examples of that are Cream of Bartok Soup and uh, The Walk. And yeah, one thing you'll notice uh, through the course of this uh, review as I'm naming off tracks, he has a gift for uh, wordplay and puns in the naming of the tracks on his albums. And uh, other tracks in the album, album though, have more conventional arrangements, uh, such as Hawaiian Shuffle, that's a very good example. Of that. That's actually the opening track on this album. As well as Three Step Dance, and that is just a great, it's an almost rock feeling song. It's got, uh, you know, a full band kind of thing, drums, and actually electric violin which is something I have not heard a lot of, but uh, because he uses the electric violin in this and a couple, uh, one or two other songs on the album, he reminds me of another artist that I've liked for quite a long time, and that is an artist by the name of Jerry Goodman. I should talk about him at some point. I've got two of his CDs as well as one uh, live album on LP, which I recently found at House of Records. 
And then there's another song on here called Zbigny, which is named for the violinist Zbigny of Seyfert, who actually passed away shortly after this album was recorded. It's actually got a little tribute to him uh, in the notation down here in the corner. Uh, and that one's kind of an echoey, spooky, surreal string trio number. Uh, the, I mean, as I said, these guys, these guys make a great string trio, and that's just a great, uh, another a good example of the more avant-garde side of things here. And then uh, another song called Deeper in Duet, and like I told you, this guy's clever with the song titles. Uh, that one has an almost Middle Eastern sound to it, and I would assume it's because of the uh, something that they do with the probably violin uh, in in this song. Just gives it kind of a Middle Eastern um, kind of a sound to it, and which kind of makes sense in uh, considering the fact that uh, the group that he was a part of for so long, Oregon, dabbles in world music. And then uh, there are still yet a couple of other standout tracks that I haven't talked about yet. Uh, one of them is called Contraire Emotions. And uh, here's yet another example of his very clever song titles. The, the reason he called it Contraire Emotions is the song is written um, with a principle, I guess you'd say, of uh, something called Contrary Motion, which is the idea of one melody line and another melody line being played you know, on top of each other but each one is uh, modulating in a different direction at the same time. So one is going from a lower pitch to a higher pitch, and the other one is going from a higher pitch to a lower pitch at the same time. So it gives it a very, very interesting sound, as I'm sure you'd imagine. And then we have what I think is the closing track on here. Uh, yeah, Love Over Time. And that one is just a great bouncy, jazzy song with uh, alternating time signatures. That's what really makes it uh, grab the ear, is it's got two or three different time signatures that it switches up uh, into over the course of the song. So that's just a great, uh, innovative, fun way to close out the album. So yeah, this is just a very interesting uh, album. And as weird as it is to say, I'm not sure if I would have picked it up if I'd known what it was ahead of time. Even though, yes, I say life's too short to be a music snob, but, you know, and I probably should have guessed what it was, at least to a degree, since the guy is holding a bass here in the cover, cover shot. I guess I just... Sometimes when things are in plain sight. They just totally skip me for whatever reason, but that's a whole nother story. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's another artist that, uh, I mean, that's the beauty of my A to Z is that I'm picking this stuff up, you know, sound unheard, as I guess you'd say, rather than sight unseen, not knowing what I'm going to get. And that's been the fun thing about this. And there's another artist uh, that I have. He was an Australian artist, I think, called Carl Risley. And he plays the trumpet. He's shown on his album covers with a trumpet, but he also sings, you know, covers of contemporary pop songs and some original pop songs and stuff. So I might not have picked him up if I, you know, without knowing what he did, I might have just assumed, oh, trumpet, he's just going to be a jazz guy. I might not be that into him, but I ended up liking him. So, and uh, yeah, same thing with Glenn Moore here. I uh, really was pleasantly surprised with this and uh, really, really enjoyed this album. So yeah interesting thing. Uh, check it out if you uh, have means to do so, if you're in the mood for jazz bordering on contemporary classical stuff, avant-garde, interesting to the ear stuff. Check it out. Hmm. Turns out I had more to say about that one than I thought I would. Yeah, I thought this video was going to go by real fast and be really boring, but it's not boring to me. I hope it's not boring to you. But anyway, uh, let's go on to the letter N, the next letter in the alphabet for today, and uh, you actually saw this album very briefly in my April Backtracks video. It made a cameo appearance, I guess you'd call it, uh, but I did, yeah, I did buy it for the purpose of Tom's A to Z. Uh, just, uh, it just happened to go along with the dis discussion, the, the subject matter at the time. But yes, uh, my letter N for this year is Peter Nero plays a salute to Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. Yes, uh, Herb Alpert's album um, Whipped Cream and Other Delights celebrated its anniversary back in April, so I decided to. This is a takeoff on the cover art for that album, so that's why I showed it. And uh, this was this was released in 1967, and it is, I believe, his 19th album, as far as I could determine. And a couple of things surprised me about Peter Nero. Uh, first of all, the fact that he's still alive and kicking at age 86. Yes, he's, he's still amongst the living. He's still with us. And he actually released, the other thing that's really surprising to me, kind of jaw-dropping in a way, he released 67 albums over the course of his career. Yeah, that, that's quite a bit to uh, wrap your head around, including 23 albums in just his first eight years. And that's actually where the uh, uh, difficulty in determining which album, you know, number speaking, this was. It took me a while to figure out, but yes, this was his 19th album, and this was one of those 23 albums he released in his first eight years. Uh, he won, uh, he's won two Grammys over the course of his career. The first one he won was for Best New Artist in 1961. 
So yes, this was only uh, six years into his career, so and he was actually nominated for an additional 10 Grammys on top of the two that he won. So anyway, Peter Nero is a pianist and band leader, and as you can tell by the title of this album, this is a tribute to the music of Herb Alpert and his Tijuana Brass. So whereas Herb Alpert's instrument of choice is the trumpet, uh, Peter Nero's, as I just mentioned, his instrument of choice is the piano. So with all these songs being rearranged to favor the piano, they take on a bit of a different feel, most of them do, although some of the compositions, such as Lonely Bull and El Matador, maintain their Latin flavor because, uh, I mean, you know, Latin basically requires trumpets, uh, in a manner of speaking, so, uh, and which in, in this case, of course, the trumpets are reduced to secondary instruments. Uh, Peter Nero's piano is pretty much always front and center on these uh, arrangements. And yes, this album has pretty much all of the uh, Herb Alpert classics that you would expect, at least uh, up to 1967, his uh, discography up to that point. A Taste of Honey is one of the one of the more interesting arrangements, uh, one of the more uh, a uh, bit more of a departure from the original arrangement. It starts out with a very slow, melancholy vibe for an interesting twist, and then it kind of uh, picks up the pace into uh, something a little bit closer to the original arrangement. And then we have the theme from Zorba the Greek, which is, the, on this album, this is just a supercharged rendition with an amazingly fast tempo, kind of like a, I guess it's bebop jazz arrangement. Uh, so yeah, much, much more jazzy than the original, and that one's that one's a standout. If you love that fast-paced bebop jazz kind of stuff with great drumming, great piano work, I mean, it just it amazes me how quick Peter Nero's fingers are on the piano. He's just fantastic. So yeah, that is a standout. And then the closing track, the work song, interesting that uh, on both of these albums, the closing track is a standout. It's not usually the case. But yeah, the work song has a very, really, really fun swing arrangement on it. So yeah, this is a, kind of an interesting twist on the Herb Alpert um, songbook. And by the way, lest you think that this is just some fly-by-night guy who just decided on a fling to record uh, uh, Herb Alpert stuff, Herb Alpert himself actually has a nice little, little write-up on the back cover uh, thanking and congratulating Peter, Peter Nero on the arrangements. So yeah, kind of a fun little, a, a great little classy gesture on Herb Alpert's part to, uh, you know, give this album his official endorsement, I guess you'd say. So yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I realize that Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass is not everybody's thing. It might not be your thing. Uh, I'm, I, I inherited like nine or ten of Herb Albert's albums from my sister and my brother-in-law's discography or um, uh, music collection. So that's kind of how I got into Herb Albert. But yeah, this is an interesting, an interesting take on the Herb Albert songbook, as I said. And I'm glad that I added this to my catalog. It's a, a fun album. Very interesting to listen to. So there we have it. Two more letters of the alphabet taken care of, knocked off the list for Tom's A to Z for this year. I've been having fun with this feature, and I'm kind of looking forward to uh, what sort of a twist I can put on it for next year as I come close to the end of this year's uh, alphabet. But anyway, that'll do it for Tom's A to Z for the month of July 2020. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.